Hello and welcome to this Electrical Science and Principles training video. In this video we're going to answer question 8 of the 8202 Level 2 Multiple Choice Exam from March 2022. There's a lot of twos there. All the information here is freely and readily available from the City and Guilds website, so we're not giving away answers to future exams in this video. We're merely going over answers from old exams for those people who want to know what they should have put for the answer and how to arrive at that answer. Big thanks to Gervais Francisco Dias for buying me five coffees and also to Jonathan Rose for donating twice via Super Thanks and also to Tony Spark who chipped in the same way and finally to Mad Axe, which I'm assuming is not your birth name there, chap, who donated all the way from from Australia in Australian dollars via Super Thanks, which I believe is my farthest flung contribution so far. So a really big thanks to everyone who chips in. It means a lot that people will reach into their pocket to support the channel and I really do appreciate it. If you're finding any of my videos helpful and you'd like to buy me a refreshing beverage to say thank you, uh, then please click the link in the description below to buy me a coffee. I actually drink tea so you get far more bang for your buck, but don't worry if not, we're living during times of financial hardship and I'd absolutely hate for anyone to be out of pocket. So on to the question for this video. It goes as follows. Which is the correct transposition of XL is equal to 2 pi FL? And then we've got the four options, as you'd expect from a multiple choice exam. So you can see here we've got F is equal to 2 pi L over XL. Uh, B is F equals XL over 2 pi L. C is F equals 2 pi XL over L. D is equal, uh, sorry, D is F is equal to pi L over 2 XL. So again, this is a little bit confusing and this could blow your mind if we're not too careful. I'm going to show you two different methods of how to do this in this video, so this video may seem a little bit longer than necessary. Um, I'm going to show you kind of the, um, the quick way to do it if you're quite confident with transposition, and then I'm going to kind of show you a bit of a hack to help you if you're not very confident with transposition that you can use for other methods as well. Uh, this is one of those subjects that people do tend to struggle with, so keep an eye out on my channel for future videos purely on this subject of transposition because it's one uh, that people I've, I've found need quite a lot of help with. So uh, let's get started and, and see how we're going to do this. So looking at the question you can see there we've got f is equal to f is equal to f. So, so we're trying to find f. Okay so the question doesn't make that very clear but the answers all are f equal. So clearly we're trying to find out what f is going to be. So we start off from this position where we've got XL is equal to 2 pi FL. This is a uh, formula from electrical science. It's the formula for calculating inductive reactants. Um, you should hopefully have learned a little bit about this so far at level two. Uh, however, at level three, we'll go into this in much more depth, what this means, how we use it, what it's for. Uh, so again, check out those videos that I've made on this subject because it is quite important and really interesting actually once you start digging into it. Uh, so how would I go about transposing this? So the first thing I'd look at is I'd think, right, I'm trying to get this F out of here. I want to get that by itself, but it's kind of locked together with all these things. Now, in this example, this is a really nice one actually because we can kind of jumble this side up as much as we want and it won't make a difference. So here you can see we've got 2 times pi times f times f. Now there's a law in maths that says it doesn't matter what order you multiply numbers in. And we can kind of prove that if we think about it like this. Uh, so let's, let's just do some random little calculations over here that have nothing to do with this. If I do 2 times 3, that gives me 6. And then if I do 3 times 2, that also gives me 6. And we can actually kind of prove it further by using more numbers. So we could say 2 times 3 times 4. So 2 times 3 is 6, times that by 4, 6 times 4 is 24. And then write these in a different order. So let's do 4 times 2 times 3. 4 times 2 is 8. And then times 8 by 3 gives us 24 again. And we could we could do those in any order that we wanted to. So let's do, I don't know, let's do uh, 4 times 3 times 2. So 4 times 3, that gives us 12. 12 times 2 gives us 24. So it doesn't matter what order we multiply in. Now what that allows us to do is it allows us to manipulate this side of the formula without really changing anything that we're doing to it, without changing... Uh, kind of whether it's true or not, because it still remains true. So we can jumble this up now. So we could rewrite this as XL is equal to F2 pi L. So can you see there, what we've done is we've just rearranged the order that we're multiplying in, because this is just a long string of multiplication. We've got the same long string of multiplication, just in a different order. But as we've seen, 
changing the order of multiplication doesn't matter. It doesn't change the final outcome. So now we can look at this slightly differently and we can say, right, so we've got F and we're multiplying it by two times pi times L. So let's stop thinking of this as two times pi times L. And now let's just think of that as just being like a, a chunk of numbers, like just a block in its own right. So if we say now we've got F times by this chunk of numbers here, that actually simplifies things again. That makes it a lot easier for us to understand. So we can now look at this and say, what are we doing to that F? Well, we've got F and we're multiplying it by a big chunk of numbers. So then we think, well, what's the opposite of multiplying by a big chunk of numbers? And the answer is to divide by that same big chunk of numbers. So what we then end up doing is we end up rearranging this. So we end up with uh, XL divided by that big chunk of numbers. And we, we do that on both sides. So we've got F2 pi L divided by 2 pi L. And what then happens is because we're multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2, they cancel out. Because we're times in by pi and dividing by pi, they cancel out. Because we're times in by L and dividing by L, they cancel out. Which just leaves us with XL is equal, uh, sorry, XL divided by 2 pi L is equal to F by itself. And is there anything over here that looks a little bit like that? So over here f is on this side so we could change that if we wanted to f is equal to xl over 2 pi l and if we work our way down the list we can see there the answer b f is equal to xl over 2 pi l so therefore the correct answer to this question is b f is equal to xl over 2 pi l simple as that okay so that's how you kind of do it formally that's how you do transposition and how you answer this question but i'm going to show you another way of doing it so if you're happy if you understand transposition and you're happy that that's how we do it you followed that quite easily and you know that's the answer and you feel like maybe you could repeat that for another transposition then that's all good but if you think that you might need a little more clarification on this then i can kind of show i'm going to show you a method here that's sort of a bit like cheating um, but it's not cheating, it's just a different way of doing it. And actually it can help you to confirm your answer. Um, and it's a way of doing this if, if you're kind of not very good at transposition and this is a stumbling block to you. So let me show you this tactic. So we'll get rid of this now because we don't need this over here. And we'll get rid of this over here. Now we already know that the answer is going to be B. Okay. But I'm going to show you this method. And, and the, the challenge is this, this can end up being a little bit more time consuming. Uh, but it can also perhaps get you vital points on the board when you need it. So I'm going to arm myself with another uh, colour of pen here. So I'm just going to grab my orange pen. Right then, so a different way of doing this, and this is, this is actually quite a clever approach, is to take your original formula and assign every bit of it a value, assign it a new value. So in this case, we've got two is worth two. We're not going to change that. Now, uh, just to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to do something here that would make mathematicians kind of uh, hair turn white. Uh, I'm going to say that pi, in this case, I'm just going to say it's equal to three. Okay, because I'm not doing any actual calculations here that rely on pi being 3.14159, so on and so forth. So we're just going to say that in this case, just in this case, pi is equal to three because it's going to make what we're about to do much easier okay please do not go back to your college lecturers or to your teachers and say that joe robinson says that pi is equal to three it's not okay i'm just <laughs> we're just saying it's three for the sake of this demonstration i shall be drummed out of the mathematicians guild right so uh what we're going to say is that if we've got uh xl is equal to two pi f l what i'm going to do is i'm going to assign each of these a value so i'm going to say obviously two is still going to be equal to two so that's not going to change so two is going to remain equal to two which kind of seems logical doesn't it and then i'm going to say that pi is equal to three so we've got two times pi and i'm going to say that f is equal to four and i'm going to say that l is equal to five okay so we've got two times pi times f times l which we're saying is equal to two times three times four times five 
A couple of tips, avoid using one, because that can lead you to some confusion when it comes to multiplying by and dividing by one. And also don't use zero either, because that'll properly mess everything up for you. Uh, so just use uh, anything sort of above one and try, and try and use different numbers if you can just for this kind of technique of doing transposition. because that's all we're doing here. We're just looking at another technique of doing transposition. So we can now figure out that if we assign these values to these letters, we could figure out what that's gonna be. So we've got two times three, which is six. Six times four is 24. And 24 times five is going to give us uh, 120. So that means that XL is equal to 120. And again, at this point, feel free to use your calculator if you want to figure that out. That's not a problem. And this, this method will work for other forms of transposition as well. Okay, so now we know that every single one of these symbols has a value. Okay, and what that allows us to do is it allows us to put these uh, numbers into our formulae, these three uh, these four different options, and then we can actually do some calculations to figure out if these are true. Okay, and if it's true, when we put these numbers in, then that is the right answer. Okay, so you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm just going to rearm myself with different coloured pens because uh, this will just help us to kind of keep track of what we're doing here. So. For this one, the, the pink one, A, we're saying that F is equal to 2 pi L over XL. Now, if that's true, when we put these numbers here into this equation, we should come out with uh, the right answer. So what we should be saying is that all of this side, when we do the calculation, should be equal to F. And we've said that F is equal to 4. OK, again, we could have used whatever numbers we wanted here. We could have changed these. These are just the numbers that I've chosen to demonstrate this point. So let's uh, do this. So two is obviously going to remain uh, two. And then we're saying in this case that this symbol here is representing three. Obviously, it doesn't in real life. This is just <laughs> for the purposes of transposition. And then we're going to times that by L. And we said that L is equal to five. And then we're going to divide the whole lot by 120, okay? So uh, let's do the calculation. So two times three times five, so we've got two times three is six. Six times five is gonna give us 30. Uh, 30 divided by 120, well, that's going to give us uh, 0.25 as an answer. If you don't believe me, you can put that into your calculator and check. Uh, so what we're saying is that if this is the right answer, and we put in the numbers that we've randomly chosen. Yeah, remember these ones were randomly generated to give us this one. If we then put these numbers into this formula, so we're checking to see if A is the right answer, then when we do that, we come up with the answer that F is equal to 0.25. But we said that F is equal to four, which means that this is untrue. Okay, so that one can't be right. So we've already established then that A, this one here, can't be the right one, okay? Let's have a look now at uh, B. Let's see if that's the right answer. So I'm gonna grab my purple pen here, okay? So we're now gonna test this one and see if this works. So what we're saying is that F is equal to XL over two pi L. And what we're saying is that if we put in the numbers that we randomly generated that gave us this answer, if we swap these symbols for these numbers and F is indeed equal to four when we do this calculation, then we should have the right formula. We should have the right transposed formula. So let's put the numbers in. XL, XL is 120, so we'll volley that in. And then we do uh, two is obviously still two. We're saying in this instance that pi is going to represent three. And then here we're saying that L is five. So again, let's do this calculation. We've got 120 divided by uh, two times three times five. So two times three is six times five is 30. And 120 divided by 30, again, volley it into your calculator if you don't believe me, but 120 divided by 30 is equal to four. And we said that F 
is equal to 4, which means that this is correct, which means that that is the right formula, as we said it was when we transposed it earlier. Now, uh, we could leave it there. So if we're actually doing this kind of question in the exam, and we're running short on time, because remember, this is one multiple choice answer in an in a exam of quite a lot of questions. We could just stop there and decide we've done that, we've got that, we can move on. But just for the sake of this video, just for the sake of completeness, we're going to complete uh, each one of these just to make sure that we kind of understand the principle. So now we're going to try and figure out which one C is. So we say that F, with this looking F I've ever drawn, is equal to 2 pi XL over L. Once again, we check, we put the numbers in and see if it works out. If this calculation gives us F equals 4, we know we've got the right answer because it matches up with the numbers that we've assigned to these values up here that gave us that value there. So 2 times pi, so we're saying 2 times 3 times by, XL remember is 120, so I think you can probably already see where this is going, and L is 5. Okay, so this is going to be a good test of my mental maths. 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 120 is going to give us 720. 720, comment below if I've got that right, 720 divided by 5, uh, and 720 divided by 5 is going to give us, this one's going to take a minute, 144, okay, so 720 divided by 5 is 144, and 144 is not the value for f that we said it was up here, so that means that this one is wrong, okay, so that one can't possibly be right. And again, just for the sake of completeness, we're going to do the last one, because, you know, you stuck with me this far, so thanks for that. f is equal to pi times l over 2xl. Uh, so again, pi, we're just saying in this case, is equal to 3. Again, please don't go and tell anyone that I've said that pi is equal to 3. It's not, but we're just saying it is for the sake of this uh, demonstration here. Uh, 3 times 5 divided by 2 times XL, which is 120. Now, I think this one is going to defeat me, actually. So 3 times 5 is 15 divided by 240. Uh, so this one's going to take a minute. I might just edit this bit out while I try and figure it out. 0.0625, I think. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> I'm going to have to find out what that is, actually. I'm going to have to check that because my OCD won't let me live any other way. I live here surrounded by calculators. How can I possibly not lay my hands on a calculator? Got it right. Okay, so anyway, the point is, is that this F is clearly not equal to 4 here. And so that means, because we were hoping this F would be 4, it means that that is wrong which means that that is wrong. So that can only leave us with option B as being the correct answer. So that may seem like a slightly more long-winded way of doing it. It is. But if you're not great at transposition, uh, or even if you just want to check your answer, so you could have done the transposition we did before, and then go back to this as a double check. Uh, just volley these numbers in that you've generated and check that it remains true. That's actually a good tactic for transposition if you're not confident with it, although it is a little bit time consuming. Okay, so that answers question eight in the level two, eight 2002 exam from March, 2022. Please hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell to turn your notifications on so you'll get all of the latest content and stay tuned for the next question in this series. Again, if you'd like to buy me a coffee or a tea, then please click the link in the description. But again, there's absolutely no pressure to do so. And all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching and check out this video here.